Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate the feast, the presentation of Jesus the Lord in the temple. We begin with a special little ceremony at the beginning of our Mass. Dear brothers and sisters, for 40 days we have passed since the celebration of the joyful feast, the Nativity of the Lord. The day is a blessed day when Jesus was presented in the temple by Mary and Joseph. Outwardly, he was fulfilling the law, but in reality, he was coming to meet his heavenly and believing people. Prompted by the Holy Spirit, Simon and Anna came to the temple. Enlightened by the same Spirit, they recognized the Lord and confessed him with exaltation. Let us, as the people gathered by the Holy Spirit in this place of worship, encounter the Christ. We shall find him and recognize him the breaking of bread until he comes again, revealed in glory. This time, those people who have candles, we bless them at this time. So I've said, bless upon the candles. Let us pray, God of source of origin of all light, who on this day showed the just man Simeon the light of revelation to the Gentiles. Humbly ask that you, in answer to your people's prayers, may be pleased to sanctify with your blessing these candles, which we are eager to carry into praise of your name, and so that, trending the path of virtue, we may reach that light which never fails to Christ our Lord. Amen. For those are candles, please raise them up, and I'll come to you and bless the candles.
Almighty, ever-living God, we humbly implore your majesty that just as your only begotten Son is presented on this day in the temple, the substance of our flesh, so may by your grace we may be presented to you with minds made pure. For Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Malachi. The Lord God says this, Look, I am going to send my messenger to prepare a way before me. And the Lord you are seeking will suddenly enter his temple. And the angel of the covenant, whom you are longing for, yes, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. Who will be able to resist the day of his coming? Who will remain standing when he appears? For he is like the refiner's fire and the fuller's alkali. He will take his seat as refiner and purifier. He will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver. And then they will make the offering to the Lord as it should be made. The offering of Judah and Jerusalem will then be welcomed by the Lord, as in former days, as in the days of old. The word of the Lord. Our response, who is the king of glory? It is the Lord. O gates, lift up your heads, grow higher ancient doors. Let him enter the king of glory. Who is the King of Glory? The Lord, the mighty, the valiant, the Lord, the valiant in war. Who is the King of Glory? It is the Lord. O gates, lift high your heads, grow higher ancient doors. Let him enter the King of Glory. Who is the King of Glory? It is the Lord. Who is he, the King of Glory? He, the Lord of armies. He is the King of Glory. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Since all the children share the same blood and flesh, Jesus too shared equally in it, so that by his death he could take away all the power of the devil who had power over death and set free all those who had been held in slavery all their lives by the fear of death. For it was not the angels that he took to himself. He took to himself descent from Abraham. It was essential that he should in this way become completely like his brothers so that he could be a compassionate and trustworthy high priest of God's religion, able to atone for human sins. That is, because he has himself been through temptation he is able to help others who are tempted. The word of the Lord. The light 
light to enlighten the Gentiles and give glory to Israel, your people. Alleluia, alleluia. you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to luke when the day came for them to be purified as laid down by the law of moses the parents of jesus took him up to jerusalem present him to the lord observing what stands written in the law of the lord every firstborn meal must be consecrated to the lord also to be offered in sacrifice in accordance with what is said in the law of Moses. A pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now in Jerusalem, there's a man named Simeon. He's an upright and devout man. He looked forward to Israel's comforting. The Holy Spirit rested on him. Being revealed to him by the Holy Spirit, that he would not see death until he had set eyes on the Christ of the Lord. Prompted by the Spirit, he came to the temple and when the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to do for him what the law required, he took him into his arms and blessed God, and he said, Now, Master, you can set your servant free to go in peace, just as you promised, because my eyes have seen the salvation which you prepared for all the nations to see, a light to enlighten the pagans and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother stood there wondering, the things that were being said about him, Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, You see, this child is a sign for the fall and for rising of many in Israel. It's time to be a sign as rejected by and his sword to pierce your own soul too, that your secret thoughts may be laid bare. There was a prophetess also, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, the tribe of Asher, which is well on in her years, the days of girlhood over. She had been married for seven years before becoming a widow. She is now 84 years old and never left the temple, serving God night and day with fasting and prayer. She came by just at that moment and began to praise God. And she spoke of the child to all who looked forward to deliverance, deliverance of Jerusalem. When they had done everything the law of the Lord required, they went back to Galilee, their own town in Nazareth. Meanwhile, a child grew to maturity, and he was filled with wisdom, and God's favor was with him. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord Presentation of the Lord in the Temple. Forty days after the birth of Jesus. And the scriptures, 40 is always a very prominent number. The Lord led the people through the desert for 40 years, with Moses leading the people to the promised land. Jesus spent 40 days in the desert, fasting and praying. 40 days after the death of Jesus, he ascended to heaven to his Father and sent the Holy Spirit after that 10 days later. Do so you see the significance of 40? 40 is a very important word, a time in our history, our salvation history. It's a time, a lengthy period of time. However long it is, 40 days. 40 days is a time in which God has worked 40 days and 40 years. We see this time, 40 days of the birth of Jesus, we come out to celebrate the presentation of the Christ child in the temple. This is all planned by God, all orchestrated by God. The parents followed the law of Moses. At a particular time, they took the child to the temple. It was also time for the purification of the mother. This piece we called purification years ago. It's now called the presentation. When Mary, the mother, had been purified after the birth of a child, after 40 days after the birth of the child. And then the child was brought to the temple and presented to God. The firstborn, the firstborn is always presented to God as the first animal, was firstborn, was always offered to God as a gift to God. Jesus, the gift of God, given to us. So today we present, as it were, the present to our God, the present of Jesus, who is the gift of God to us, to each and one of us. And as you look at this, awesome readings today, an awesome scene in the temple. We could just put ourselves somewhere around in that temple. And there's Mary and Joseph, a poor couple, coming with their firstborn child to the temple. 
They make an offering of two pigeons or two turtle doves. Mary to perform the rite of purification, which is requested of law for her. Two simple people, two humble people, with a child in their arms. And Mary is there and Joseph, and then this man Simeon comes along and proclaims the child to be the Messiah. Alas, a powerful master, you give leave to your servant. My eyes have seen salvation, which you promised to your people. God promised Simeon he would not see death until he saw the Christ, the Messiah, the chosen one, the Emmanuel, God is with us. God promised Simeon he would not see death until he saw the Christ. Simeon waited and waited and waited. Was God promised? And what God promises, he always fulfills. So Simeon knew he was waiting on this promise for God. His faith kept him going. His faith kept him alive. He did not lose faith. Even think about Abraham, when God told Abraham, the father of many nations, Abraham waited and waited because God promised. And when God promises, he fulfills. But what God does is keep us as we're waiting to test our faith, to build our faith. Simeon waited and waited. He saw the Christ. And Simeon did something that is not really ever mentioned in the scriptures. He held the Christ child in his hands. He held Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the Word made flesh, in his arms and blessed blessed this child. He blessed the parents, but he was blessed by God to hold the Christ child, the living word, the word of God, the word made flesh, the word that was there before creation, the word was there that poured over the earth, and this word became flesh. And Simeon was blessed by God to hold the Christ child. And then Anna came along, a woman of faith, who devoted her whole life, had become a widow after seven years of marriage, devoted her whole life to the service of God that served this God, to spend time in the temple praying day and night. God blessed her, and she came along at that time and recognized this is the Christ, and spoke to others about him. She didn't, there's no account of Anna holding a child, but she spoke about the Christ. We see the promise of God and the faith of another. Both have faith. Simeon had her faith. God promised him he not see death until he saw the Christ child. And Anna, in a commitment to God, was there praying in the temple. God blessed her. And she saw the Christ child and she recognized him. And that's such an important thing to see but not recognize, not understand. This in our own lives too, we have to recognize the Christ. Who is the Christ? The Christ has come to us. He's there. Do we recognize him? Anna and Simeon recognized them at the presentation. They were filled with awe with the power of God. And it says Simeon was led by the Spirit to come in at that time to see the Christ. Christ was presented in the temple. And the glory shone. As the word, there was no more glory in the temple. The glory of the temple are gone. When Christ came back, he brought back the glory into the temple. He brought a glory back into the temple. A shining light that came again. A light enlightened the Gentiles. A light enlightened the pagans. A light enlightened the world. The light is still shining in our world today. The light is shining out in the darkness, the light of Christ. We have to recognize this light, the light that's come into the world, the light to lighten the pagans, those who don't believe, those hearts are not with God. Jesus came for that. We celebrate that moment of his presented in the temple where he was another manifestation, another epiphany, another showing of a Christ child who came into the world. He has come to bring salvation. Salvation is here for us, is given to us, is procured for us, is bought for us, is paid for us, is given to us. Salvation is there for us. So we need to enter in that salvation. And today as we celebrate the presentation, we to a court present ourselves to God once again. To give our lives as the fragrant offering to God, a gift to God, a gift of God. Jesus, God has given us the gift of his son Jesus. We know how to give back the gift of ourselves back to God. The day is the day of all people with consecrated life. Celebrate today, the day of consecrated life. All the nuns, the priests, all those who have consecrated lives to God, this is the day that they celebrate, especially the lives of many people in our world and our nation today. This day of consecration to God. The people consecrated their lives as service of God. Jesus was presented in the temple. A light came again. The light came back in the temple. The light of God has shone. The light of God is shining on us at this time. Let us receive that light. As we lit candles just before Mass, during, as the Mass began, showing the light of Christ has come into the world. The candles are lit. 
a sign of Christ, the presence of Christ. A blessed candle is a sign of a living God among us. He's living with us. He's with us. He's among us. He's presented to us. Let us now in turn present ourselves to God. Ask him, let us be the lights of the world. Amen. Amen. Let's come as a people of God to bring our lives before him. Let us offer our lives in a special way to God today. That God will receive the gift of each and every one of us. Those who join us in this broadcast, in their homes, wherever they may be at this time. That God will receive the gift of our lives as you offer them back to him. Because he's given us so much, received so much. Let us today all join us in this broadcast, give our lives back to God. Contribute ourselves to God again. Say, God, here I am. I've come to do your will. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Lord, hear us. Lord, we pray for our world today, that our world may see the light of Christ. Light may shine out in the darkness of our world today. Light may bring a new joy to others. And they see the darkness dispel, the light shining brightly. So, Lord, we pray for the whole world today, that the world may see the light of Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, we pray for our world leaders. They will govern honesty, integrity, and morality, and peace and respect for all human life. We bring it all before you today, and Lord, we for all our world leaders. Work together for a common good of people. All people may have a share of goodness. All be, may people have that share of life you've given to us. Lord, hear us. Lord, Pray for the intentions of our Mass today for all those who bring the special needs, those who wish to pray for the souls that come before us, for celebrate birthdays, those in any need of special intentions, we offer them to you, God, in this day. Ask, Lord, receive the prayers, be healing the souls, lead them to the eternal paradise. All those who offer prayers to you, Lord, receive them, answer for each and every one. Lord, hear us. Lord, we bring all these petitions before you, lay them before you, as you ask Mary, beloved mother, to pray for us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among men, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now. As you make all these prayers to Jesus Christ, our Lord. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. With the offerings made and exaltation by your church, pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray. For you will that your only begotten Son be offered to you for the life of the world, and so with a lamb without blemish who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right truly right and just, a duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. 
our Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, your co-eternal Son was presented on this day in the temple, revealed by the Spirit as the glory of Israel and the light of the nations. And so we too go forth, rejoicing to encounter your salvation with the angels and saints. Praise you as without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the house. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the house. You indeed, holy O Lord, the font of all holiness. The holy, therefore, these gifts we pray. By sending down the Spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The time is betrayed and willingly in his passion. He took bread and gave him thanks. He broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. But this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come. Therefore, when you celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Given thanks, you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, gathered together into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread to all the world, bringing the fullness of charity together with France our Pope, Jesus our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also, brothers and sisters, who fall asleep in the hope of resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. The Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed apostles, and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages. We merit to be coerced eternal life. We praise and glorify you through your Son. Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, God the Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command and form my divine teaching me dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trust us against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. Let's offer each other a sign of peace.
Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called the supper of the Lamb. But if Christ keep me safe with eternal life. Brothers and sisters, at this time, those right here in the chapel will receive Jesus sacramentally in Holy Communion. You're invited to join us and make your own spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I now cannot receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you, Lord, and I unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you, O Divine Savior, O Jesus, O Blessed Sacrament. Oh 
come to us today. You present yourself to us, Lord. We too in turn present ourselves to you. I ask you to receive the gift of our lives. Receive that gift that you have given to us. Give it back to you today. I ask you, Lord, that you may make this gift holy, a holy temple for you, a living temple for you. So mighty God, offer your lives once again on the special day of the presentation. Say, Lord, take, Lord, receive. Take our souls, our minds, our bodies. We can give you glory and honor and worship you. King of kings, the Lord of lords, the majesty, our Lord, the creator, provider. Praise you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Let us pray. By these holy gifts which we have received, O Lord, bring your grace perfection within us. And as you fulfill Simeon's expectation, as you did not see death until you had seen the privilege to welcome the Christ. We may, going forth, meet the Lord, obtain the gift of eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Mighty God bless you all. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth rejoicing. Our Mass is ended. Lord. Happy feast day to every one of you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, the King.